Welcome to the Magic Turtle Monday Morning Show, the variety talk show where I test the limits of what the YouTube audience actually wants to see. Can you believe it's almost April? If the government can get you to believe that, they can get you to believe anything. This whole reality is an April Fool's joke. Everything is a Anyway, today I wanted to talk about something we've all experienced. It's discouraging, it's painful, it's humiliating, and I'm not talking about taking a yoga class for the first time. <laughs> Where did that laughter come from? Oh god, they've installed a laugh track into the simu- No, what I'm talking about is when somebody else is better than you at something. And I don't mean like better like you could practice a little bit and catch up with them next week, but like better in the sense of you see their talent or skill and go, I'm gonna give up everything I've ever tried to do. I quit existence. Especially when it's something that you thought you were actually really good at. Ooh, can't you feel the painful sting just thinking about it? You spend all this time learning and practicing some type of art or a sport or a trade skill and then somebody else comes along and blows you out of the water without seeming like it took them any effort. Oh my god, I can feel the hope leaving my body as I talk about this. Whew. Hope sure smells like a bad onion burp. I just had this happen to me recently. I've been painting a lot recently, as you probably know, and I've been struggling with this dragon painting because it's literally the first time I've ever tried a painting that isn't something like these swirly whirly do giggles over there. And then, on top of all my doubts and trepidations, I come across this guy's art. He's somebody I know through a Facebook group. Same concept, fantasy art, same medium, acrylic, same age as me, and yet about 40 times the talent as me. It's just one of those things, you know? Practice only gets you so far. Sometimes you just have to be blessed by the gods of a wiffle ball. To get wiffle ball talent, I mean. Sorry, I changed the topic from painting skill to wiffle ball skill without telling you. That said, the gods of wiffle ball do also cover the job of blessing people with talent in paper mache and juggling. There's only so many deities of talent, okay? Some duties have to be doubled up. Anyway, there are a lot of posts out there calling people out for saying that art skill is like all luck and it doesn't take practice and they're like, oh, they're wrong. And I agree, of course. I was painfully shy in preschool and spent pretty much 100% of my time painting black dragons with black markers that smelled like black licorice or purple dragons with purple markers that smelled like grape. Man, I miss those markers. I hated black licorice back then, as all kids do, but now if I had one, I'd be like... <laughs> But I do think there's a foundation of luck and genetics that sort of people build talent on top of. And no matter how hard I try, I'll never be as good as this guy. That's fine. I'm totally okay with- <laughs> Let me try that again. I totally accept that I'll never be as good as this guy. <laughs> I- So what do we have to do when we realize somebody is way more talented than us? Number one, accept that that's just the luck of the draw sometimes. Even if they did get that good solely as a result of practicing a lot, some people don't have the time and privilege to practice all the time. Like single parents working two full-time jobs don't have the luxury of being able to compose a- two hours symphony concerto in B plus major to the fifth power. And there's always gonna be somebody better, unless you're Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps might be the best at swimming, but I'd like to see him paint this. Oh, that, that's a bad example. The second tip I have for when somebody is better than you at something is realize that the thing that requires talent, the thing that you may or may not be the best at, is not your whole identity. Do not attach your entire self-worth to a single thing. That's important for all kinds of reasons. Any criticism of that thing will feel like a criticism of the very fiber of your being. You know, it's good, but I, I, th I think the paint splatters make it look a little bit mm, messy. I'm not messy. But your, f your face is messy. Shut your messy mouth. If you equate your skills to your actual self, finding somebody better than you will be like you just ran into a better looking clone of yourself and they were like, oh, I was told we were supposed to swap out lives. I'll just take it from here. Which one's my wife? On top of that, I'd also advise you to spread yourself a little bit thinner. Find new ventures or add new attributes to your life so that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because somebody is going to come along and sit on that basket and then sit on your face and then you'll have egg on your face. So you may not be the best at this one thing, but that's okay because you got you got other stuff going on. Stuff on the side that this guy wouldn't has never even attempted. Your personality is a complex program of all sorts of files and applications, and nobody is like you, and nobody is as good as you are at all the things that you do that make you you. And if somebody somehow is better than you at exactly everything you do, then you gotta release some sort of self-doubt emergency valve, preserve your happiness and sanity. You just gotta be like, well, that sucks, but I guess I'll just be over here doing my own thing. In fact, some people are in inspired by incredible talent to work harder on what they're doing or try other things. Which is my final advice, especially in creative ventures. If somebody is doing the thing you're doing but way better, maybe you should find a new niche or a way to put a new personal spin on it. Find a style that they're not attempting, at least then it's your own. The main thing to remember is we're all our own unique little jelly beans with our own colors and flavors, kind of like the candy that I'm trying in today's new candy review. Oh, it's Jujubees, a fat-free candy. But not a sugar-free candy, I'll tell you what. I don't even know what these are. They're like little cylinders. Never had them before, obviously. That's the concept of the show. These are really small and really dense. Look at the size of that. Is that even worth it? It's so hard. It tastes like fish and also nothing. Not great. One out of five turtle shells. Have you tried these? What am I missing? Let's try two red ones. Oh god, my teeth are gonna break. I feel like I am eating teeth. These are fruit-flavored teeth. Yum. I'm trying to get this industrial grout out of my teeth. Look, the spell book has another surprise for us. Well, it's not really a surprise. It's the segment I always do at this point of the show. 
So continuing the topic of being the best at things, there was a series of three They Might Be Giants songs about a woman who started as a hotel detective, became a rich billionaire, and then went on to be a crime-fighting cyborg. The songs were such a cool concept that it inspired me to make a series of three comedy mystery films about this woman and her rise to success. We only did the first two, and the first one sucked. <laughs> Honestly, the second one's terrible too, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Here we go. I wanna look young again. Whoa! And I need you to do it for me. Hey! I understand your request. I mean, not everybody has a fountain of youth in every pore like I do. I mean, come on. 79-year-old widows need a Mr. September on their cowboy calendars, too, you know. I, I need to look young again. I've spent my entire life alone. I'm not ready to give up yet. You will operate on me tonight. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. But it's not a simple procedure fixing a face. I mean, uh, it's nothing like brain surgery. I mean, you're actually at risk of screwing something really important up. I use a photo of an ideal face frame as a guide sheet for my operations. Here's what I say we do. We give you one of these noses. I just want to look younger. I suggest you do what I say, or you'll have to get a manhole cover to hide the hole in your self-absorbed sewer of a skull. It's pretty hard to do corrective surgery and a simultaneous brain transplant on yourself. You see, Coates escaped with the procedure done. He's out there right now with a face twice as young as he used to be. The only thing we can figure is that while Coach was knocked out, Dr. Hippoplasty got a look at his face after he took the bandages off. And with his pride in the way, he saw the surgery as something of a challenge and ended up doing the operation anyway just to prove he could. Then what? Hippoplasty took him out of anesthesia to show off his work. Coates remembered being tricked and shot him before realizing that Dr. Hippoplasty had indeed fulfilled his request and done the surgery. How can you be sure that's exactly what happened? For as long as I've been in crime, I've learned that it's actually much less interesting than all that. All right, how do you think it happened? Hi, can you operate on me? Okay. It's perfect. How can I repay you? All I need is a hug. <laughs> oh, I'll do it, Lord. Oops. Either way, the evidence points to Coates. Are you packing? No, why? Are we staying somewhere overnight? I'm packing heat. No, I don't own the DVD, but the hotels usually have pay-per-view. Not the movie. Are you loaded? I have a lot of money. Yes, we've already talked about that. I locked and loaded. I have it in a safe. I mean, are you carrying arms? I have arms. Do you have any concealed weapons? Only these two torpedoes. Finally! Do you know how long I waited for that setup? Let's just go. Hi guys, uh, can I help you? Those jobs are half off today. Well, they're full price, but uh, you get half your nose cut off your face. Dr. Hippoplasty? Ah, you heard about the murder, but everything's fine. It was just a big mix-up. Nobody ever came here and shot me. I'm fine. Oh, okay, never mind. Do you mind if we investigate? Oh, I'll be in the bathroom just washing the blood off my hands. From surgery! Gotcha! Something's fishy. Do you smell that? Well, I, I didn't mean literally, but yes, that's something smells fishy. No, it's, it's latex. Believe me, I know what latex smells like. Is it coming from here? Latex masks of Dr. Hippoplasty's face. That bastard is so vain he made replicas of himself for his own amusement. That man that we saw was not Dr. Hippoplasty. It was Coates, wearing a Hippoplasty mask. We have to go for Coates! Don't move! Give me that! Are you done? Yeah, I'm out of bullets. Now, if you're like me, you too are discouraged from following through on cool project ideas because you're worried they're not going to turn out good. Thankfully, on this show, I revisit some of my old abandoned ideas and give them a second chance at life. I'm actually going to look through one of my newer notebooks for an idea I haven't used yet, see if there's anything good in there. Okay, here we go. So yeah, the Beach Ball video. I did a comedy album called Lucky Ta, with that, which had a bunch of like songs that were supposed to be funny, and I um, uploaded a lot of them to YouTube with sort of like music videos, but not really, just sort of like trippy backgrounds with the lyrics so you could see the lyrics and get the jokes and all that sort of stuff. And I did basically one for almost every song in the album, except for this one, which I had planned to do, but never really committed to it because, I don't know, the music videos weren't that well received, so... Let, let me just do the beach ball video, and here you go. It's a song about, uh, it's like a travel agency song about this planet that's supposed to be tropical, and you go there and you have an amazing vacation, but there's a dark secret about what's actually on the planet. Here's what that music video might have looked like. They call it the beach ball, cause it's a planet of shores, and every inch of it's Travel pamphlets all say that it's a 
the perfect sphere of paradise Where it's always a sunny day And you're free to be that fight The beach ball gets passed around The beach ball has had this The beach ball is always toasty The beach ball is a place I saw Go through the corkscrew to get there It's run by the Crotons So you know the price is probably fair Sign up today For a timeshare Summertime on this planet Lasts a million years Oceans and the brownest skies too well, I know you prefer blue Blue on this planet is the color of blue Try the mud bath hot springs They make up most of the sea Those bubbles are from massage jets The mud's not boiling, I swear You'll have the time of your life The vacation to end all vacations I promise the planet isn't some huge blazing inferno No, I said it isn't Where we send folks to control over population That would be crazy the beach ball gets passed around The beach ball has had its fear The beach ball is always toasty The beach ball is a place I so love Now it's time once again for the Sincere Art Prompt Challenge when I randomize an art prompt and try to do it sincerely. Okay, let's see this one. Uh, Mad Science. That's a cool prompt. We're gonna do that one and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, after a lot of different ideas and incarnations, this is what I came up with. It's another desk ornament because I feel like it's kind of fun to fill the shelf back here with all my past sincere art prompts, but here it is. It's like a little alien creature preserved in some sort of cryogenic ooze. Um, kind of disgusting. I know. Oh, it just, the tail just broke off. Okay. It's not preserved. It's being uh, dissolved in acid apparently, but there you go. Mad science. Mad that I wasted so much time on it, I can tell you that much. So it was an experiment in art and science. Okay, it's late, but I came up with a better idea using the same concept of separating the oil from the colored water. It's a little fortune-telling dust device, so there's a little dye in there, and there's glitter, and you shake it, and you ask at the likelihood of things happening, and on the bottom it tells you, oh, five out of six, that's pretty good. Will I ever be actually successful on YouTube? Let's find out. One. Nope. <laughs> and I guess that's it for the Magic Turtle Monday morning show, because I have to leave for work. Be sure to leave questions for Magic Turtle's magical tips, and I'll give you life advice. Also, give me a like and a subscribe, ring that notification bell, send all sorts of those good little dingly vibes. And remember, if you see somebody who's better than you, don't stand for it. Take them down. Burns? Burns?